everybody, Ronaldo Offerman here. So in the last video, I talked about taking amazing aquarium photography and videos using your DSLR. So now let's talk about editing it. In the last video, I said you need to shoot in RAW. The RAW is usually going to be, if you're using a Canon, a CR2 file. Nikon has their own format, as does the Panasonic. But ultimately, RAW data is just that. We're just gonna go ahead and import these into Lightroom. Now in the past, Lightroom was a much more expensive tool, but now with Adobe Creative Cloud, you can pay for it monthly. The Lightroom only is, it's semi-affordable. Another thing that you can do if you don't wanna pay for Lightroom, uh, it's a little bit more limited, but you are able to import these raw files into iOS. I'm not familiar with if Android can do it or not. And there is a uh, free version of Lightroom, but really for as little as it costs, go for Lightroom. And if you're a student, it's a heck of a lot cheaper too. Disclaimer, everybody has their own way of editing. I'm going to show you just how to quickly make your photos look good. You can obviously tweak a lot more than uh, what I'm about to show you. There may be some things that you may run into that I didn't. And a lot of it has to do with your experience in shooting. Remember what I said in the last video is don't assume you can fix it in post-processing because Sometimes you can't. Uh, sometimes you'll need to go into Photoshop to fix something. If you don't have Photoshop, well, then you're in a quagmire of an issue, right? So I know with me, if I have a problem, I can just right click, fix it in Photoshop and bring it back. And I'll do that for later on. But going back, you can take as little as five seconds on each photo to as much as an hour. It really depends on not just how much effort you need to put in, but how much effort you want to put in. This video is going to go over some of the basics. It is not by any means going to teach you everything about Lightroom, but playing around with some of these settings and maybe following some of what I do will help you out as well. On the right hand side here is a histogram. You remember we talked about the histogram in the last video. It kind of shows you where all your colors outlie, whether it's too dark, too light, if there's any major peaks that you need to watch out for. So again, the further to the left, the darker it is, the higher is your peaks. You're better off having a dark because you can always bring it up, but once it's too far up high in the white area, meaning that it's completely washed out, that data is not there. So it's not like you can bring, you know, color into those areas. Let's click on develop. Very first thing that I do actually is, it's kind of a bit of a cheat, but I, my camera is somewhat already calibrated for Lightroom, or I guess Lightroom is already calibrated for the camera. And if you actually go down here on calibration, it is at zero. I did it this way just so you can kind of see how it work out. One of the things that you can do is you can take your camera, you can do it yourself where you can take a it's basically like a test card. You take a photo with your camera and then you're able to calibrate it. Again, I zero it out for now just to kind of show you an idea. But for now, what I do is I just bring my vibrance up. I don't bring it up too high because with salt water, those blues look disgusting. Um, I usually bring it around anywhere from 12 to 16. So we'll leave it around 12. And I also do bring the saturation up just a little bit. The reason I go ahead and do it on all the photos is because I know I'm gonna bring it up anyway, so now I don't need to adjust it as much. The other thing that I also adjust, I'm gonna zoom in here, and I do sharpen it a little bit more. I know that with both my lenses and my camera, I need to bring it up a bit more here. So because of that, I also bring up the noise reduction. Again, if I need to adjust something, I can later on, but I know my camera. So this gives me a nice in between there where you can see here the black, there is none of the noise or anything that you would normally see. Again, I'm only shooting at 1600 on a 70D, so I really shouldn't see that much. I'm gonna shift and click on the last one. We're just gonna sync everything. It gives me a good starting point to go from. I just hit Command D, which allows me to deselect everything. So the first thing you know that you want to do is if you have a slight lean in your photos like I do is correct that. This is a sample photo here. You can see that looks terrible. If I open up more, I really can't without leaning it back. So I might just squeeze it in a little bit more. If you have to spend a lot of time on a photo and it just does not look good, just trash it in reality. This is going to be one of those photos. I, I can almost guarantee it. So let me show you what I'm doing here. Right now, I'm just playing with the highlights and the shadows. I never play with the exposure unless I really need to. Uh, and I'm gonna show you why. If I bring up the exposure, yikes. You see that black? That's no longer black. And if I bring down the blacks, okay, well now I bring that, but now look at the terrible peaks over here. So don't just don't play with exposure. 
You really don't need to, except in very rare cases, because you have your highlights and your shadows. So you can see here, I've got the highlights and I can bring the sand down where it's no longer washed out. So there's that. And we can bring the shadows up or down a little bit. I like to bring it up just a little bit and then I bring my contrast up. And what happens is I want the background to fade and I really want those corals to pop as much as possible. And do you remember how I said, hey, make sure that you shut off your lights in the background? There it is. Because of that, this photo is trash. Now this is a little better here. So now let's find one that I do like the position where the fish are at and the corals. You know what, I think this one's the best one, so I'm just gonna shift click and have to right click and remove photos. If I just hit delete, it only deletes the one that's highlighted. So we're gonna go here. And there we go, so let's try that again. We're gonna adjust the highlights if we need to. In this case, I really don't need to too much, but I do wanna bring those shadows up just a little bit. And then I usually mess with my texture. Let's zoom in here so you can understand what texture does. Texture does exactly what the name says. It brings a texture out. As a matter of fact here, you can see this. I bring it up. It almost makes everything look too surreal. Like it just looks terrible there. If I bring it all the way down, it almost looks like an Android phone. Haha. <laughs> um, or that your, you know, your lens was foggy. So I do bring the texture up a little bit. You got to experiment with these three. Your next one is your clarity. It's very similar to the texture, but it really brings out not just the contrast, but the lines between. For example, did you know there was a Mandarin there? No, I sure as heck didn't, but there he is. It does help you bring attention to certain things, but it also brings up the uh, clear or the highlights quite a bit. Let's take a look at the histogram right here and notice that as I bring up that clarity, it pulls from the dark and goes towards those lighter colors, especially that blue right there. So let's, you know, I, I don't like bringing the clarity too much. Dehaze is where it's at, especially with an aquarium. And dehaze gets, is exactly what it says it is as well. It gets rid of that haze. See, if I bring it over here, it looks like my lens is foggy. But if I bring it up, look at that. Look at that contrast. The dehaze is really what you're going to play with. And now that we've brought the dehaze up, let's see. I don't want to bring it up too high. So we're going to put it at that halfway point. Now let's look what the clarity does here. That's a little too much. So now we bring it here, play with the texture a little bit. And I'm gonna actually dial back the texture because I don't want all the coralline algae for, the, for you freshwater people. That's this purple crap right here, which now brings us to the color balance. So you can do the color balance. If you remember, I mentioned a gray neutral card. It's a card that photographers use that you would literally click on this, click on the gray, and it would give you a perfect color balance. You can stick that under the water, take a photo of it. Excellent. You're good to go. Don't do it outside of the water because again, the light hits everything differently. So you have to do it in the water or you can just adjust it manually or you can cheat by clicking on the sand, assuming you have white sand give or take. And again, I want you to see what happened here because it does give you a good starting point. I'm going to click here. Then I'm going to click on the sand. And now our colors are really popping. It almost looks again, a little surreal. I have no idea why that keeps popping up because my Mac hates me. No matter what update there. Uh, it almost looks a little surreal, but it does give you a starting point. What you don't want to do is you don't want your tank to look fake. You want it to look realistic. But once you have that starting point there, you can adjust it a little bit. If you don't like it, you can go back. In this case, it's perfect. I'm just gonna dial it back a little bit on the blues and you're good to go. Uh, we're gonna leave the vibrance and saturation alone. Again, I can adjust it if I need to, but I, I, if anything, you know, you, you dial it back, you're like, you know, it kind of looks good without that blue and you're right, but don't bring that entire saturation down. Uh, instead, you're gonna go to your HS selling color. Notice I skipped the tone curve. That's a little bit more advanced. I don't wanna talk about that in this video. And I'm gonna bring the saturation down. Now you can do this by doing a couple of things. You can just pick a slider, bring it down and see what happens. That can be dangerous. The easiest way until you really get a chance to look at everything is to click here, click on a color. So here's a little too much blue where the coralline is. I'm gonna dial it back. Ooh, that's too much, that's too much. Let's bring it forward here. And I'm just, I'm, I have a touchpad, so you, I just click and I just drag down while I click down. And you can see the blue and the purple come down. So I got that there. 
But I want the Coraline to really stand out a little bit too. So I'm going to bring that purple back up. And that gives me an idea here. Now I can also do the opposite. Maybe I know that this, you know, Octospawn is a little brighter. So I'm going to click it. I'm going to bring it up. Because I know it's more neony than that. Why is my Gandhi all nasty looking? So let's bring that up there. And again, that gives you an idea. Now, if that blue is a little too blue, I'm going to click on the hue. And I can change it now. And change it to the proper color temp of how it looks in person. Well, I didn't have that purple. I didn't have that right there. You know, for the most part, since I shot it the way it's supposed to be, it's not an issue. But if you don't, it's a good way to fix things if you need to. And then the same thing with luminance over here. You can change the luminance of something by clicking here. And there. I don't mess with luminance often. Nail your exposure right. And for the most part, you won't need to when it comes to aquarium photography. If you got that, you're good to go. Let's go to the next one. This one is kind of a mess here. Aside from the fact that I don't like how it's been taken, or I don't like the fact I didn't follow rule of thirds. We're going to bring that up a little bit. Click that. Focus a little bit on the ricks. This is out of focus, but that's fine because the recordias are really the focus here. You can see here that it's really not in focus. If I can't clean this up, we're, we're trashing it. And don't forget, there are other photos, so test everything. And we can see that the other two really are not as focused either. So I'm just going to remove those. Now, sometimes it does help if you edit this next to your tank so you can make your corals look as they do in person. You don't want to make it look fake. Now here, this is the rig that's in focus. This one is, is not, and that's fine. So I'm going to use the dehaze. The dehaze really helps here. You can see how it's bringing a little bit of attention to everything as I brought the texture, the clarity up, up a bit as well. I'm going to bring that texture up just a bit more. And I don't really have anything that I can tweak this to. So I'm going to just bring the temperature to the cool side a little bit. And this is what I mean when I say everything reacts differently underwater. Watch what happens as I bring this up to a warmer color temp. So if I bring this down here, whoops, that's too low. If I bring it down, the colors on the coral are very dull. But as I bring it up here, the colors pop a bit more. You don't see the blue light, but you do see that luminescence of the corals. You can see here that looks really nasty. So at this point, I've got a couple options. I can bring it back down. And if I bring the blacks down, you don't want to bring it too much because then it looks too uh, too fake. But if I bring it down just here, it brings a lot more attention to my recordias. I still have a little bit of my zoas in the background. You can see the sour. Uh, is it the sour apple? I can't remember now. But uh, you can see the uh, zoas there. The Sonic the Hedgehog is completely gone in the background, but that's fine. You know, it was never really seen anyways to begin with. And I'm actually going to crop this part out here. So I'm actually going to bring this a little bit more. And I'm happy with that. Now you don't want to have it where, you know, oh, okay, well, I'm going to focus just on this recordia here because it might look okay until you try to print it out. Then, you know, it's only a one inch image. And if you try blowing it up, it's going to look nasty. And that's why I said you want to make sure that you use your macro lens for these things. So there we go. Let's go to the next one here. That is not good. We're going to trash that. Trash it. That's a little better. Uh, you know, this is just a little bit sharper there. Again, this one did not follow rule of thirds. So I'm going to make it a little bit better, at least so it's not 100% centered. And again, it's the same thing. We're going to do the dehaze a little bit. I'm going to bring that contrast. I, the highlights, I don't want them too dark because then it's an artificial pink. And I do want a little bit of that light coming in, but I also don't want it to look like it's blown out. And I'm going to bring the shadows all the way down. I want that pink Ganyapora to really stand out. And then just have a little bit of that frog spawn here, plus the bubble coral in the background. And this is where you got to play with the clarity. Notice as I bring it back, 
the whole coral looks really washed out and blurry as I bring it forward. It looks a little better. I want to zoom in here and just, I just want these polyps to show up a little bit more. And it's good. Now at this point, I can bring the saturation up a little bit hmm. or down to make my Ganiopora look like it would look in person. So in this case, that's about good right there. It's not as purple though. It's usually like this is not, my Ganiopora is not this purple. So I'm going to bring the hue down. There it is there. Now you can add additional things if you want. Like for example, on that last photo, you know, maybe I want to add, uh, we're going to skip the lens corrections. It's not really necessary, but maybe I do want to add a vignette. So let's add a vignette here. And in this case, doesn't really add anything to it. Don't add a vignette just for the hell of it. Looking back at this photo, and I do, I do like to go back and forth, I do see that I brought up the details too much where my Ghani almost looks sick. So uh, let's bring the clarity back down to zero so I can just zero that out. And bring the highlights down just a bit. And there we go. Before we go to the last part of the video, I want to show you just this frog spawn one here because I love the contrast between that green and the blue. It zoomed in on the tentacle. So let's find the sharpest one. I usually compare the two. This one's a lot sharper than the other. So that one's good there. I don't like that one as much. I do like that one. I do not like that. Actually, excuse me. I do like that. So let's see. That one looks a little better. This one's sharper, but this one just has a really cool look to it. The second one's sharper than this one. So you can see that I just kind of compare and, uh, you know, back and forth until I find the one that I like. So again, it's the same thing. Let's dehaze it a little bit. Well, it doesn't look that green in person. It's almost like a neon type green. That's all right. The clarity is going to help us out with that part. And then the texture is going to be just a, t a, a smidge, literally. I do not need to mess with that too much. Another thing you can do is you can actually grab this and then adjust it. Uh, there is no reason to do that, though. And now the hue on the green... My frog spawn is very neon in person. Not a lot of yellows, more of a green. This is the perfect green that I like for it. And I want those blues to come out a little bit more. So I'm going to do the contrast, which I know that it makes it a little more artificial, but I really wanted to focus on this detail. I mean, look at this. That's gorgeous. Let's blaze through this one real quick. If you ever want to compare an image, you can just hit the, I believe it's the backslash for both the Mac and PC versions. There it is. Beautiful. Okay, so for this one here, because of the dark contrast between the bicolor Blenny's body and the background, I do want to bring that clarity all the way up. I do want that texture almost all the way up. So while it does make the War Coral Favio look fake, I kind of like the contrast here. So we're going to leave it as is. Now, of course, I can use different brushes and fix it. But again, I'm keeping this simple for now. And now let's bring this up a little bit more. Again, notice how everything changes. It's not that the photo is turning yellow. It's the color, the color temperature is changing. Now, that is why it's so important to shoot raw because if I shot in JPEG, it would not have all that raw data. And on JPEG, all the temperature slider would do is literally turn it yellow. But in the case of raw, because it has everything, the white balance information, all that is not exclusive to the photo. It has everything. So let's see here. 
I'm gonna bring that up just a bit. I want the purples from the War Coral to pop. Now, last but not least, um, and again, this is not a Lightroom tutorial really, but you can go to edit watermarks, make your own watermark. This is really important. If you're gonna upload to Facebook, Facebook completely screws everything up as far as photo compression. And then you'll be like, well, why is my, you know, why do my photos look terrible on Facebook? It's the way Facebook compression is. So, what I would recommend, big thanks to uh, Brian Glenn Photography on this one, uh, is we have some settings to use specifically for Lightroom. Now, I've got two of them. I got full resolution, and in this case, I'm just gonna call it salt water. I have this where it saves on my desktop, and the full resolution is just that. It's full resolution, in case I ever wanna print, or in, you know, for whatever reason. But I wanna re-export it again, and I have one that I've already called Aquarium. These are all my settings under my this particular name. So I'm just gonna call it Saltwater Reef. There it is right there. So let's take a look at what happens here. Video, I'm not worried about that. File settings, we want a JPEG and only 80%, not 100 for quality. Facebook compresses it down anyway, so this will prevent them from compressing it as much. Resize to fit no more than 900 pixels at 300. Now I'm not quite sure why he recommended this, but I do know that I've tested it the other way around at 72 DPI and no, Facebook will still compress it. 900 pixels at 300 resolution really works well with the Facebook compression. Obviously click don't enlarge, but that shouldn't be an issue. In reality, and I think part of it is because especially those have been doing graphics and all that for a while, we know that monitors display things at 72 DPI. But because of Apple, you know, the iPhones, the high resolution screens, 4K and everything, things are not displayed at 72 DPI anymore. So a 300 DPI with 900 pixels for the longest edge, you won't have issues with Facebook compression and you want to sharp it for the screen. Uh, you can leave all the metadata. I do uh, remove personal information. I remove location information. Why? Because I don't want people to know where I live. I don't want somebody saying, Ooh, I like this tank. Let's see where he lives. And that's something really important. That's why you don't want to upload directly from your phone without removing exit data because you're going to tell people where they can go and hijack these beautiful tanks. Watermark. I'm going to choose my aquarium watermark that I've made and after export. Okay, we're good. So now we're going to click on export and now for a last minute tip so let's talk about managing your Instagram from your computer on a Mac there is a program called grids there's two versions I have the original and I have the new one which is a subscription base and has a lot more powerful tools but it's a great app because I can access everything on my Instagram but unlike the web based from a Mac I'm able to upload photos and even do stuff to my story so you can see add new post add new stories which is pretty dope what it doesn't let you do is do the cross posting on there but it is what it is. There's also a free way of doing that. You're going to need Safari for this, although it may work on the other browsers, but I have no idea. So go to Safari and you're going to go to develop. If you don't have the develop item here, you're going to need to enable that in your settings. So you're going to go to develop and on user agent, choose iPhone. Don't choose the iPads, just choose iPhone. It's going to refresh itself and now you'll see you can actually upload a photo. So let's give that a try real quick. There we go. We'll do this one here and we'll go to next and now we'll call this click share and there it is so you can now upload directly from there and hopefully that makes your life a little bit easier because you may not want to sit here, transfer these to your phone and then upload one by one. So now you can do multiple ones if you want to or use the Grids app. It's a great app. I don't know if there's a Windows version, but it does for Mac. So, hey, guys, thank you so much for watching. I certainly hope that this answers some of your questions. And obviously, even if you don't have a DSLR and you take photos with your phone, try to use a RAW or use any camera that does support RAW, especially with the latest version of iOS supporting RAW. And even if it's JPEG, you can still use Lightroom to really make your photos stand out a lot more than what you'd expect. Thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to share, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and that notification bell. You guys have a great night, and God bless.